Good evening, good morning, everyone. Thank you for inviting us to this conference. This is our very honor to give a presentation at this meeting. My name is Toshiyuki Takahashi. I'm a reviewer at PMDA and also a clinician pediatric nephrologist. Pharmaceutical and Medical Devices Agency, PMDA, is a regulatory agency in Japan. Our presentation title is What does a regulator need to see before approving uh, HIFPHIs? PMDA perspective. Because most of these drugs were first approved in Japan, we, PMDA, would like to present briefly the point at issue in the review of these drugs. For disclosure, we do not have any COI to declare. This is today's overview. Our talk includes the efficacy, the safety, and also benefit risk assessment. Currently, Japan has approved five new oral inhibitors of the prolyl hydroxylase domain enzyme for the treatment of renal anemia between 2019 and 2021. Those are namely uh, Loxistat by AstraZeneca and Fibrogen, but as a stat by Tanabe Mitsubishi. This product is developing by Akebia and Otsuka in EU and US. The Prodestat by GlaxoSmithKline. Enalogistat by Japan Tobacco and Tori. Molidistat by Bayer. The overall benefit risk balance of the five HIF PHIs are positive. And the efficacy and safety are similar to those of ESAs. First of all, According to the guidelines for the clinical evaluation of renal anemia drugs in Japan, the PMDA requested at least one double-blind randomized control trial and available data on 300 or more Japanese patients treated in comparative studies and available data on 100 or more in long-term administration studies. For assessment, what does necessary efficacy data? We focused on this point. Whether hemoglobin reached the target level. Whether hemoglobin was maintained in the target range. And to clarify the clinical position of HIFPHIs, we assess whether it could be switched for ESAs and was not inferior to ESAs for maintaining hemoglobin levels. And whether there were differences in efficacy among patients with non-dialysis dependent CKD or hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis. On another hand, what are necessary safety data? We focused on whether there were no unacceptable risks beyond the unexpected benefit, whether the safety profile did not markedly differ from those of ESAs. Now, how and why were HIF PHIs approved early in Japan? For one thing, Differences in clinical practice for renal anemia between Japan and Western countries, including target hemoglobin levels, the dosage of ESAs, and iron use, may lead to choose local trials in Japan. And another thing, while PMDA considered the shortage of cardiovascular outcome data at the time of submission, it is unfeasible to conduct such trials in Japan since, as shown in the figure, cardiovascular risk is much lower in Japan 
than in Western countries. I would like to summarize PMDS perspective on the benefit risk assessment for HIF-PHIs in clinical trials in Japan. In the point of efficacy, HIF-PHIs increase and or maintain hemoglobin level in patients with non-dialysis dependent CKD, hemodialysis, and peritoneal dialysis. Whereas about safety, there were no signals for an increase in risk of cardiovascular event, tumor progression, retinal hemorrhage, and hypertension compared to ESA. As for potential benefit, Oral administration may reduce hospital visits and or pain, especially in patients with non-dialysis dependent CKD and peritoneal dialysis. On the other hand, we set long-term safety down as uncertainty and whether HIV-PHIs are effective in patients with ESA resistance is unknown. This table shows the core of the risk management plan of HIV-PHIs in Japan. Thrombo embolism has been identified as an established risk of all HIV-PHIs. And a pooled analysis of comparative studies revealed that thrombo embolism appeared to be more frequent in hemodialysis than in non-dialysis CKD, although its incidence did not significantly differ between HIV-PHIs and ESAs, and between each HIV-PHI. In this regard, a boxed warning is given on the drug label of all HIV-PHIs in Japan. In addition, seizure hepatic injury were picked up based on the result of the global clinical studies. Moreover, there was some more theoretical concern about HIV-PHIs, such as cyst growth in polycystic kidney disease, uh, and so on. The risks of HIV-PHIs, including cardiovascular event, thromboembolism, and hypertension, appear to be similar to those of ESAs. To end this presentation, I would like to emphasize that this is regulator's challenge. What is the minimum requirement? And how can we approve a new drug based on benefit risk assessment? Collecting extensive data on efficacy and safety is necessary, but request for complete data can delay effective drugs to be available. Thank you so much for your attention.